evening. Welcome to the Board of Education February 13th work session. Do uh, I'd like to open with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May I have a motion to go into closed session? Pursuant to the general provisions, Article 3-305, I move for the board to meet in closed session to consider matters that relate to negotiations and dis to discuss uh, budget strategy. I have a second. second. The motion is second to go into closed session. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we're going into closed session. We'll be back at 6 p.m. What did you say that? I did that. <gasps> Okay, welcome back to the Board of Education's work session for February 13th. We are starting back in our open session and we'd like to start with some budget discussions. Right. Thank you, Captain Kelly. Um, as we've seen over a multitude of these budget work sessions, I've been providing the board with three particular documents. One is a, a sort of a summary of where we are aligned by the strategic plan and some of the dollars and the requests that have come forward from the schools and from administration. Um, and then two separate sheets to kind of break it down a little bit further. Um, I don't want to delve into these sheets because we've, like I said, we've dealt, we've gone into them three, four, five different times, but it does back up what's the, the visual that's up on our screen. So what we would like to do is come through and have a consensus as to what this board would be willing to go forth with the county commissioners as an ask, a total ask, uh, for an increase over last year's amount that they contributed. The one single sheet in front of you does have, based on conversations with Dr. Kane and um, getting an idea of where the commissioners might land uh, as far as a funding amount. Uh, we did make some recommendations yesterday, which reduced our budget, our total ask, down to about $3.3 million. And the changes are represented in blue on your one page that says superintendent's final recommendations. So the boxes in blue are changes from when we had this discussion just uh, a little over a week ago. Um, and I can just run it down for you real quickly. So if we stay in the learning accountability and results column, and we'll go all the way down, so we are still maintaining the three overhires uh, due to, you know, enrollment issues this year. We had to place some positions in overhire, so we still are requesting that we fund those. Uh, curriculum materials and instruction, we've reduced that down to just $20,000 for the science consumables. Uh, curriculum and instruction stipends, that's for our life skills uh, para, uh, additional wages for that above this year. Uh, again, it's almost like a mandatory need. We have reduced in this scenario any additional school-based staffing requests and any additional school-based material of those instruction uh, requests. Moving on down, equal opportunity schools. Dr. Kane's talked to you, you know, multiple times about that. Um, that is something that we're uh, currently doing and we need to on go um, continue to fund that. So that's a $30,000 ask because that is something that's not budgeted. Uh, the data-wise consultant to increase some consulting time for our schools, that was a $5,500 ask. That is now zero. And then um, a myriad of curriculum and instruction, license agreements, consultants, materials, and stipends, all of those have been zeroed out. And this board also asked for some new initiative to be presented. We did that through the Virtual Academy, and that has now been zeroed out as far as Dr. Kane's recommendation. If we move over to safety and security, the maintenance and security contracts for our cameras, as you know, we're installing them all over the place, and we have some maintenance contracts related to those to keep them up and operating. And again, that's a mandatory cost of $28,000. Athletic officials just keeping pace. That's why it's in the cost of doing business, um, constantly increasing the cost of that. And then again, you know, if we make it to playoffs and things like that, there's a, there's a cost there as well. Uh, the facilities building service supplies and contract that was originally a $200,000 ask again just trying to maintain that's now we've cut that down to $100,000 and then Mr. Pinder's request for two additional staff uh, has been zeroed out as well. 
over operational effectiveness. This would be uh, the renegotiation of the bus contract, the addition of late buses for Ken Island to put them on par with Queen Anne's, and then there's the potential of needing an additional route on Ken Island for uh, um, enrollment growth. Uh, all of that totals $236,000. That's basically remained unchanged since we started talking over a month ago. The public information reorganization, again, off the table at the current moment for funding. Uh, I've taken my finance internal audit contract of $9,900 off of that to try to reduce the ask. Um, hopefully when we go out for bid, we'll see some savings there or we'll just have to continue on um, not being able to do a full audit of all the school books uh, at, the, at the school locations. I mean, our books are uh, by state law have to be audited, what? but we wouldn't have it at the, at the schoolhouse. What, so <clears throat> that was the um, an audit that would be in support of the the audit that we got being done for yes that was that was a request out of the um, legislative audit to have audit. that done yeah and that was a ninety nine hundred dollar cost there okay. and then we would just forego that cost for at least one more year okay. and then under the human capital uh, we have some ongoing costs you know increase the teacher retirement our rollover compensation agreements for our agreements that are currently in place. Uh, increase about a two and a half percent uh, for the health insurance. Uh, the county should see about the same percentage increase for their workforce since we're both in the ESMEC Health Alliance. A placeholder for compensation available for negotiations and then trying to add a little bit of funds for some of our substitutes and home hospital teachers. Uh, all of those have remained unchanged since we started talking a few um, weeks ago. So all of that that shows on your list there totals uh, four, just over four million dollars we would receive about $700,000 from the state. Uh, we know the county maintenance of effort is $1.1 million. So this request would be asking the county for an additional $2.2 million above maintenance efforts or a total of $3,320,122 as shown on the screen uh, on display. So with that, um, we can certainly entertain questions or conversations. Um, that is a working document that Mr. Farley is going to narrate for us. So if we want to put things in, take things out, that number at the top will change. And then the idea would be when we finish tonight that we would have a number that we were all comfortable with. And then the superintendent would prepare her budget presentation to you based on that number. One question. The 700000 from the state, is that coming out of this already? Is this out of this number? So that's right. so the $700,000 coming from the state is funding what's below. Oh, that's why I'm looking at it wrong. Yep. Okay, thank so you. So the total revenue would be $4 million, seven from the state, 3.3 from the county. And that funds everything that's shown here that has a dollar amount. Right. Um, on the list, on it, where you went for, um, um, let's see, curriculum and instruction, first column on the top. Mm -hmm. You lowered it from 36 to 20. Right. Okay. Now, I guess my concern is that's supposed to be a mandatory cost. What, it, what was this? How did that happen? That week? It's science consumables. Sure. With our uh, the implementation of our elementary science curriculum, uh, part of the requirement to do the lab component requires consumables. So the additional $20,000 $20, goes directly to all of our elementary schools. Uh, directly into the classroom to provide for those consumables. Currently, uh, that money is taken out of the curriculum instruction um, materials of instruction um, category, so that only leaves uh, myself for needs of the system in each department. 18,000? About 18,000, just another 20. So that is, that is a direct correlation to the, the new science program, the new science standards. Okay, so you're going to pay the ba the difference between the thirty six thousand or what we had before, whatever that amount that was, at, to down to twenty, out of your funds. Well, that's how we've been we've we've it's been paying it. So I believe this is the ask to to remain that that doesn't come out of the curriculum instruction right. budget that it that it's it's an additional fund so that funds currently can be used for other purposes, other needs. In the department so for an example if if enrollment might go up and we might need additional materials for a particular course um, schools wouldn't have that 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 would roll up to central office to be able to support that okay. good question um, 
I have a question. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Um, on this FY 2020 position request summary, are any of these positions included in this ask? So the only positions that are included in this ask mm -hmm. are the three positions. Three overhires. The which three are the three overhires. overhires. If you take the single sheet and look down at the bottom, each of those categories is broken into two numbers. One, like in your first column, it says 3.0 mm -hmm. and 274,000. Yep. That's what that whole column adds up to. So if you look at that first block in each of those five columns, mm -hmm. you only see one 3.0. Right. So, we so that's three positions. So we actually had 16 that we needed, and now we just are whittled down to three. We actually had like 30. 30, but yes. I'm just going off of this sheet. Yeah, yeah. Yes. correct. Yeah. You're right. You're yeah. down to 16. So yeah. um, what are, you, you know, there's a few things I'd like to talk about there. Um, if there's an ability to add more of those positions back in at some point during the course of our discussion, that's something I'm in favor of. So, so the ability is there. Mm -hmm. That will just raise that yellow number. Of course. And then, <laughs> and then this board would need to be comfortable that that's but the that yellow that number that they're willing the to support. Number, right? And what is the? yellow number okay well and the, as we begin our discussions that's an area that I see um, as something important to me I don't know how many of them back in and you know how do you pick and choose this one's more important than this one when they're really all equally important in different ways I, I, I agree um, um, for example um, I, I just went right to the class size list this is on the teacher the uh, right. This one, the second page that he gave us oh, okay, that yes. has the school-based yeah. positions. Just looking at the class size column, if you go down to Kennard Elementary, if we did nothing, we didn't add in any teachers, it would actually end up 24 to 28 children in a third class, a, a grade three class. That would be correct. Elementary school. Um, go down the class size one. They currently have 21. They're requesting. So the request would keep it. Okay. Right here. This right here. Okay. They currently have 21 students um, per class average. And if, if they get the teachers we're asking for, they would maintain it at 21. If they do not, it's going to be between 24 and 28 students in a class. And, and I consistently campaigned on this, and I still say it, that I'm in favor of keeping class sizes as low as possible. You know, what matters in terms of the overall budget, I'm not going to want to do it to the detriment of other areas so that our functioning is out of whack. But it is a consistent message that I heard when I was on foot door knocking for, you know, a good year in the county. Um, and so I remain committed to that. And, and if I may, Captain Kelly, to, to support your point, if, if you recognize that in the overhire that Mr. Fister had talked about, where it says Canard <laughs> Elementary School, where there's an overhire. So if you recall that when we went to open school in August, certainly we unfortunately had to reduce staffing. So what the superintendent recognized is as school was getting ready to start, class sizes were very high. Yeah. So that's why we have that additional overhire was exactly to Captain Kelly's point, right. to reduce right. um, to reduce class size. Right. And also, uh, Kennard Elementary School is, is by far our, one of our largest elementary schools. Mm -hmm. So that overhire bring, will bring us back to the 21 on Kennard? No, it would. It would no, no. We'd have to go in addition in to addition, that. So, right, so what we're the, okay. the overhire is just saying we had to do that last year. Now we need to, we need to let, let's yeah. put that back, so to speak. Yeah. And then in this case, would be adding another and staff if, to and reduce. We, and we so have the reason taken that other staff member off. Yes. Yeah. So the reason that number is twenty four hyphen twenty eight. Mm -hmm. Getting the one is twenty four. Mm -hmm. Getting none, it would go to twenty eight. Okay. Are these not relevant where, where they're just not listed here? The, the class sizes for these other positions underneath the high school? That just didn't make sense to put in there? Or is there a reason why those are blank? So the, uh, the class sizes, the current, regular, and actual, are only listed under elementary and middle. None are listed under. I would imagine, and Mr. Pelusi can tell that, I would imagine it's the flexibility of the schedules. Yeah, so you can't really pinpoint it. Pinpoint it. But we have more of that availability with the middle and the, the elementary. Sure. So what uh, we're getting ready to do, we're in the process of, uh, in the next couple of weeks, is scheduling all of our high school courses. Right, so so what, what these additional staff uh, requests are is to be able to offer more programs that 
it, so an example of if a teacher is teaching in a particular pathway, but there is a need for social studies as an example, that teacher is, is taking on the social studies as well as their pathway. Mm -hmm. So in order to offer more course offerings in a pathway, mm -hmm. that teacher wouldn't have to teach social studies. Now you have a designated teacher that's able to take up more, mm -hmm. uh, more sections, yeah. if you will. And for me, class sizes and this, this for me, it matters more at the elementary and middle school. That's just the way that I tend to think of it in terms of the field that I'm in. And the reason why I say this, I said this all last year and I'll say it again this year, and that is just a teacher's ability to manage the behavioral health issues that go along with larger class sizes. And when those things are having to be handled, there's less ability and attention paid to the actual education and instruction. And you'll see those issues more when the children are younger versus when well, you have different issues when they're in high school. But I, that's why I tend to advocate as strongly as I do for the small class sizes. So that would be a priority area of mine in looking at where we'd be looking at Centerville Elementary at 23 with the one class size. Um, Kennard, which we were just looking at, the 24 to 28. Um, I'm, and at the Centerville Middle School, the, the middle school mathematics, it looks like that number's gone down, so that's good. I don't know why that is. That 23, 24, so, and 21. Yeah, is let, the me, let me let me just let me just clarify those numbers. Mm -hmm. On this particular list, that was those numbers have been stagnant since we've been talking about it. Oh, so okay. so since that is a zero, you want to you want to focus on um, more along the lines of the current number. Um, I didn't I didn't readjust. I'm sorry, the middle number. The middle so number. if we okay. didn't get the middle number, yeah. that would now go to 24. If we got the middle number, it would go to 21, 21 using the middle school as the example. Okay. So that was a request of one. Okay. So currently it's 23. Uh -huh. Give them the teacher. Mm -hmm. um, it would, it would um, go to 21. No. If we didn't get the teacher, it would go to 24. So this one's written wrong? No, Backwards. I think it's just we weren't comprehending it the way that we I'm, I may have it backwards. Okay. It would it be 23, would it would be. go down to 21, and if we didn't get this position, it would go up to 24. So those yes, two I'm sorry, yes, yeah, okay. that is correct. The, the other one I want to touch on, because we, we went through it last year, and I'll say it again, there's not even any class size numbers here, and that was the music teacher at Centerville Middle School and how that publicly erupted, and the notions of them having more students in that music program than at the other middle schools, so they're, you know, trying to say that the, it's not equitable in terms of the ratios of the class sizes, so there's a bigger need for that music teacher at that specific middle school. I just bring that up again because, you know, I'm a big proponent of smaller class sizes, but I also sat on the board last year when that erupted publicly. And How did we just, solve it last year we, and we were yep. unable to do it without this? Uh, we, we currently have, have, have. There was a gentleman who came on is, board who's he, currently he was teaching. Retired and he came back in to, to teach, but my understanding yes. is that he's not going to be here this upcoming year. So Correct. He just volunteered to teach. He had taught. Previously. He's a retired he's um, in the county. Uh, teacher of music yes. uh, from Anne Arundel County that lives here in Queen Anne's. So mm -hmm. he did that for free last year? No. no um, <laughs> this, this, this current year. <laughs> he's not that he's, good. Yes, he's under, uh, <laughs> he's under a contract. So it's like an overhire thing. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. That's exactly right. So just being ahead of the curve on that because, you know, that, that's going to be another issue there. Mm -hmm. So these are some things that I'm personally seeing as priorities. You know, everybody else can talk about what they are seeing as. I'm as the same on that music teacher because that is technically an overhire. We hired mm -hmm. someone in to solve that t situation mm -hmm. and it's temporary. So it's not, I don't so know, it's not disappear really next week. Right, right, it yeah. didn't just go away. Now we've, we've corrected all the overhires. Mm -hmm. So that one. Mm -hmm. frankly, You're going to talk about equity. I have a problem with the fact that we do not have a business teacher, a math teacher, and a science teacher at Queen Anne's County High School for the engineering and biomedical pathways. I have a problem with that. We're going to talk about equity. That is just as important. You know, I, we don't I'll, offer I'll, those classes. No. Well, they, they don't, don't they, have these they people. Do, but well, it's, it, it, that's, and, that's and, and we what know. this gets back to is being able to offer more sections of that. So. Unfortunately, the way that we're running the scheduling now is that if, if Greg is a social studies teacher, but he's also, he can also teach in these other areas, uh, it allows me not to be teaching the social studies, but allows me to be teaching more sections in a particular pathway that we're able to offer. So that is a lot of the whole need, and I kudos to, to both of our high schools, how they make their schedule work. 
um, with the resources that they have based upon student need. And I think that's something to take into consideration is all these, this is completely driven by, by the request of students is how. Um, if, this, if the program is not there, you can't offer it. No, and I, mean, I think that's doing uh, a disservice. But is, it, is that what's that's, happening? That's we, don't, we don't offer the biomed pathway to Queen Anne's County High. In, in, I went in, toward it on the CTE tour. There was, yeah, I saw it in action. It's sure, we're, we're, we're still offering it, but it comes down to what can we offer first semester to what can we offer second semester. And so depend, of it. A absolutely, which is completely driven because remember, so it doesn't we, make it a we, whole program. we have a, well, better than nothing, it, but not where. No, well, that's not yeah. where we want to no, be. I know, I know, not where know. we want to be, but it's better than nothing. That's what that's what I'm trying to say here. But we do offer the program. I'm we sorry. do, we do. the The program is definitely offered. We just can't do it. For yeah, and I think where that where this balance becomes is offering program pathways, um, which are part of our graduation requirement that every child has to have, as well as balancing the required courses that a child has to take: math, social studies, English. And it's that's a matter of equity between the high schools, and I, no, and I, agree I, with you. And I, yeah. I feel very strongly about that. I, I, I feel strongly about everything we've asked for, I, I, but yeah. to be realistic, mm -hmm. from what we have, well, told and what we know and assume, um, it, it has to be cut, and mm -hmm. we don't like it, and and it's how it is. Um, so. I, just uh, figuring one over another. I, I mean, honestly, it, it. Sure, and that that's. We have to make a difficult, difficult decision, right. and here it is. And I don't like having to pick one other, over the other either. I just you know recall the very public outcry <coughs> that we will see again, and. Correct. That's just what it is there. And then I tend to focus on the elementary and middle schools for the low class sizes because I still am not fully understanding the complexities of <laughs> high school scheduling. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll get that by my third year on the board. <laughs> and, and we've also, I believe was a, if there's a few questions in your packet that are also related to this that, yeah. that might help. Once you um, get a high schooler, you'll know. Clearly, I have one. clearly understand. Yeah, Did freshman. So I'm learning with her. Okay. So, <laughs> so if I can, yes. let me bring you back a little bit. So let's go down this green sheet, okay? To Ms. O'Connor's comments, she doesn't want to. Uh, Ms. Harper's comment about the business. Um, Captain Kelly's uh, point about the... I think it was the when it was the mathematics teacher. Anyway, if you want to go down and just say you want to add a couple more, we can put that number up on that screen and you'll see that number change. You want to leave it as the only funding the three over hires, but if you want to add a couple back, we can do the quick calculation, add that number up there, and you'll see what that's going to do to that total ask. Okay. If you want to go through that exercise, so um, special ed teacher. I, that's where I was just going to go because. Well, that's how critical. How critical is that? We have there's two different places where they we are desperate need yes. special education They're to the total of ten special education teachers we need for our system, and we have them out of this. And the student caseload it says here is increased in that for that yes. particular. That's exactly are you right. Talking about so if we put one of those Bayside Bayside in Ken and Island High School, Ken Island uh, High School. Uh, there's yeah, so okay. Let's put the special ed back. How about the first grade teacher at Center? And I want to know what what's the issue with the. Uh, Special ed on Bayside. I mean, you're going down sure. each one. Sure. Yeah. It, it really gets down to, to caseloads and depending on the needs of the individual student. So in speaking with Bayside, um, I believe, uh, depending if this position would become available, it would be the difference, let's say, for an example, of having 13 students, which is relatively high, to 27. Now, those are 27 different needs, and some of those students are, are higher needs than others. The Ken Island High School uh, request is of um, the increased population of needs of special education students coming out of the eighth grade class into the ninth grade class for this upcoming year. That's a big transition too. That year. It it is, and that's all. And remember, that's in that's in life skills. Um, uh, oh right, yeah. So, so do you move? Since you're coming out of eighth grade, are we sliding them to the high school? The teachers. I mean, you've got special ed teachers. That, or is there a um, problem with seventh coming up to eighth? I mean, I mean that's kind of the idea, and it, and it really doesn't hurt to have the same teachers move with the student. I, I know it doesn't all work that way, but it, but special ed's pretty specialized in that, uh, perhaps. It, it is. Uh, it, we also have a, a there's also a, a current vacancy in which we're trying to hire uh, the life skills teacher that left about the middle of the year. 
Uh, but in speaking with the school, they were certainly uh, the advocacy of the high number of needs. That came up at our articulation meeting when meeting with the middle school principals talking about the rising ninth graders, that there was definitely an increased enrollment specific to this particular area. Yeah. Above, I mean, above and beyond. Okay, so you still have that need in eighth grade. That's my question. I mean, they're moving yeah, this up to will ninth. be in, into the ninth grade. So the the teachers that are in eighth grade, are you expecting the same number coming into eighth grade of special ed need, needed children? Well, I, I can certainly double. I'll I'll double okay. check those numbers at the middle school. Only level. because we can move them up. And I'll, I would. I'll I'll certainly take a look at that. Is there a reason for the trend on that cohort? You know that that would it certainly depends on like on the yeah. individual needs of students in a particular uh, enrollment of a particular class. It yeah. just, depending on the individual need. It just happened. You know, uh, and, and there's a variety of reasons where, depending on the specific requirement, just but in specifically in life skills, yeah. correct. Okay. And you know, Mr. Fister, I, I don't know even maybe an approach here is to say, you know, looking at supporting maybe three additional uh, positions. Um, that and way. then that could give the, the superintendent mm -hmm. um, the, the flexibility to go back really through this with her staff, right. um, double check some things, and then come back. It, that's also another way you could approach this. Mm -hmm. And she does a wonderful right. job at being flexible and trying to work the best she can with some of our requests. So I, I just want to publicly say that. So, let, so let's okay. just, uh, let, you want to pick three? How many, you do pick four? How many do we need special ed? Are we two? cutting out? Two. Two, two. two. just two? Yeah, that's what's on this request. Okay, well, so um, if we did so, if we did four, Mr. Farley, in that group, uh, no, not that one. Leave that as a three. Go down to the fifteen point five blank. If we need to. Yep. I think he's named four total. Positions. That one right there. Look up on the screen, right there. Okay. And the two being special ed. Go into there. Um, canard. But um, put over that. One. Yep. So See where the 15.5 is? Go over here and put in four. What's that total number? Yep. Put in four and put in 286,324. So, Mr. Fister, just, just to be clear on, on what Mr. Farley's doing there, oh. that would be four additional, that, that's four, four positions teachers. off this. So, which is two special ed and what else? And two whatever else that, okay. you know, at the so discretion of superintendent? Off of this. Oh, oh, I was adding adding back. To that. Yeah. Adding back. Add, adding back right. on to Now so our number goes mm -hmm. to 3.6. Three, right, correct. Right, Ms. Harper. Okay. And Mr. Fister, just to be clear, yes. that number also includes the three overhires. Yes, it does. Because those overhires, we feel, like I gave you that canard example, they weren't budgeted. Right. But we now have them no. correct. Right. So we've got a. We've maintain got a budget it. that exactly. We've got to budget that going forward. Maintain it, or you get the deficit again. On. That's right. That's so right. those. That's on, right. If you look on the screen, so those three are here: the overhires mm -hmm. for two fourteen, and then this is the four. Do Special. with what we will. So they have seven. for two eighty six. Yep. For um, but we said four special ed. Is that special, right? Special special ed. And right. Two special ed and two special ed and special ed two and other fillers. Or like the canard the, the could be the class size. It's just that we needed to do in. No, the overhires. No, are they're already taken care of. The overhires are done. So, so keep in mind yeah, that, as Dr. Kane, I think, mentioned either the last meeting or the meeting before, and Mr. Peluski and I are familiar with this in some of the larger counties, there's always a pool of two or three teachers that the superintendent has discretion over that if they had, un, I'll use the term, I don't want to say an unfunded position, but an unfilled position, mm -hmm. such that the canard issue comes up this year, then she could pull from this one teacher to put it somewhere. And so, I mean, that could be these him, two teachers. It could be something like that. It, it's to fill gaps is what it is. So they would be. So as you get closer to as you get closer, opening school. Yep. And we then, recognize. Then we figure out where the yep. need is. We just don't have that luxury like in, in, this, in this district. Um, now, could that person possibly be one of the Centerville Middle School music? Because that's the one I've got to keep driving home again tonight. Unless if they don't have music background, though, you know, it, so these two would be at the discretion, but probably not for something specialized like music or. Well, I mean, as I mentioned, I, th I think one approach could be in order for you to get to a number that you're you're uh, comfortable with, you could say we're willing to support four positions and then let the superintendent work with her staff to really look at, you know, a lot of different factors 
and then present those those four to you class size being in consideration okay. special edu uh, special education compliance being a factor into that mm -hmm. tested areas mm -hmm. being a factor into that uh, all things in which we're held accountable to uh, and and measured on yeah well I guess I understand what we're doing and we're given the flexibility but I think when the with that Centerville music teacher I think we need to class that as an over hire. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't Is the gentleman willing to stay on? Did we did did they hear anybody we don't know that yet? I believe it was only for one year. Yeah. And keep in mind, even if that gentleman he's in an unbudgeted Right. Uh, situation. Yeah. You know, there, there was no money for that. So we're, again, we're taking right. a little bit of pieces in here. Right, so right, whether right. it's that gentleman or whatever, the dollars need to come into this right, budget. Right, right, right. So it's robbing Peter to pay Paul. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. I do like that we have the one over hire already in there for the Stevensville Middle School, the, the teacher for the language arts. That's already in there because those class sizes yes. look like they would have gone up significantly. So that's one of the ones up there, correct? Yes, yeah. it's okay. one of the three. The, and the three that are listed in the blue over to the right, mm -hmm. those are the three current hires that are funded. Are there other class sizes that just aren't on the sheet that are higher numbers? Or did you did you pull the ones that seem to be in the most jeopardy of the larger in class sizes? I Again, guess. the ones that we could ascertain based on the data that we put out oh. at the time. To, at gotcha. the time, so which is really, middle. Yes. Okay. We're, we're I mean, we certainly best. could have given you what a science, yeah. you know, but you're at, at a high school, right. but then next year you might have m much more. So as time goes on. More or, yeah. or less sections is what it probably needs to be than class size. Correct. Correct. What sections, yeah, it would be the how number many sections, of sections you can offer. That's right. That's right. I was just going to say, so as time goes on during our budget session, um, this being my, my second year at the rodeo, um, remembering that in a month or, you know, six weeks or whatever, some of these different needs become known about the higher class sizes that maybe we don't have accurate information on at this moment right now in the snapshot of a piece of paper. And then we would act appropriately at that time, sh if we can, based on our funding. Yeah, and, and I, I, I go back, I think the Cunard Elementary School is a, is a good example of you know, when, when the superintendent had to cut positions, but as we got closer and closer to the right. opening of school, then you're starting to see your he class sizes are almost 30 at an elementary school, and she certainly had to reduce that Absolutely. in order to make it, you know, manageable, mm -hmm. and then hence, hence the overhire. Mm -hmm. So, I, and I think back to Mr. Fister's, Mr. Fister's point is, you know, the superintendent had, had four within her disposal, I'm just using that as an example, that as you get closer and all the numbers as you get closer to school fall out, who has the, the where is the most individual need? Mm -hmm. But we'll, I mean, these are certainly needs, mm -hmm. and, and the superintendent will clearly, I'm sure at, at her uh, budget, how many of her positions, clearly articulate what her priorities are. Uh -huh. Are you up for adding anything else? Um, well, we can go over, I mean, yeah. on, on teachers, yeah. on positions. Um, I mean, look at the. I'm not. I'm not belaboring the point, but look at look at the ask now. Go ahead, Carrie. My my other issue is the other big thing last year that we didn't hear at the end of it, and I don't know where it is right now, so I do apologize. Sure. And that is the mathematics, the 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 computer science pathway that was happening at the high school, and is that been corrected, taken care of, our parents now feeling comfortable mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. That way. Because yes, that was going to be another thing that we got to figure we, out how to designate a person if we cannot get this pathway. We, we, we do. We've offered, okay, so correct, we've there. offered uh, one section of that to get it started, level one computer science. And in the second part, we were able to offer three sections. Oh, so, good, good. So um, we shouldn't have the same public outcry and people feeling as if their children are not having access to And this. I know, um, having spoken with the teacher, having spoken with the principal, um, that it seems that the students are very uh, pleased. Uh, the parents are very pleased that we're <laughs> able to offer it. And, After I, and, help, and a point I'll that, that um, Mrs. Great. Harper made earlier, it, it's now equitable. We're offering it. Uh, in fact, uh, I believe it's by the year 2020, the governor had put in legislation that we're required to teach uh, computer science by yeah. uh, to ensure that program. The next thing that will come behind this is really building a piper pipeline into middle school, and we'll talk about that later with the requirement of computational learning. Uh, so, 
a side note, but it, it's how all these programs build at an early level mm -hmm. to be able to offer them and expand them in, into the high school. Mm -hmm. And to target them at the age developmentally that they need to be targeted at so they can progress adequately through high school. Mm -hmm. I think there is a CTE piece to the Kerwin Commission too. Yes, there is. Really that, well. that was one of the big Which pillars. Hopefully we see money from that. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's this thing 20 years off and <laughs> just this thing on the horizon that we to all talk about that, you know, we'll look forward to seeing eventually. So there's a, there's a few blanks on that right hand side, you know, one of them being the public information office reorganization. Um, if you're entertaining on putting any of that back. Uh, the school-based materials of instruction, the 141.704. We could certainly throw a number in there if you'd like. Uh, the school audits, like I said, I think I'm comfortable going forward. That hopefully, with the RFP, we'll we'll recognize that um, some savings through that and be able to incorporate that need. So I'm I'm comfortable leaving it there. And the rest of it is just basically getting curriculum instruction and some of their needs on par with. As I've mentioned before, Mr. Pelusky has $32,000 to handle MOI uh, needs across the system, and each high school has basically $50,000 for athletics. It just, you know, so this is just trying to get, this is just filling gaps. And, and this, we will continue to rob Peter to pay Paul if we don't add any money there. And of course, if you add money there, it's going to increase that $3.6 million number. But, you know, we, we do the best that we can with what we have, and this is just trying to get him a little bit more to be able to fill those gaps, those needs, those kids that might come in unexpectedly, that chair that breaks in a classroom. Yes. Uh, the desk. Um, yeah. our, uh, our warehouse being empty now from what you used to fill from, now you have not much I mean, there. Mr. Pender's done a great job trying to patch together broken projectors and broken smart boards with some of that replacement equipment, but, you like know, a, a bulb for an overhead there. projector is, what, $150? Yep. You know, imagine three bulbs going out in an in a, in a elementary school. You know, that's $500 out of their budget. So that's what this, and again, we're only talking minimal dollars. Right. You know, the big thing is, as we, as we saw, we added four positions, we raised $300,000. You know, give me, give me f materials of instruction and I'm going to raise it $22,000, you know. But again, it does raise that bottom line. So, um, and then the last thing I'll say is uh, to Mr. Pender is, is, you know, there's two positions there that are not going forward. If we think that's a need, we could certainly add those back. But again. It's just going to increase that number. So, let's see if you know wherever the board wants to go and what you're comfortable with, we will. On the uh, non-school based, non-position costs, it's on the the blue page. The big, yes, ma'am. Blue page. Um, I see the materials, the science consumables. That's the elementary. You're talking about yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. The, um, the life skills. We have a life skills. Position uh, is that included in here at all that we did this year? We filled this year, right? And I've, uh, something probably to make sure that we clarify: this is this is life skills, the decision-making curriculum, not life skills as in a special education course. So remember that this is uh, the work that we've been doing with the health department in implementing a curriculum to help students make better decisions uh, about. Um, tobacco, uh, bullying, uh, which has been very successful. We did what, seventh grade last year? Uh, we, grade, yep, yes, we're, well, with this, so what this addition is, is in the implementation model, when we move from sixth grade, we move into seventh grade, really want to move to eighth grade, um, just because of the budget, what we found is that um, to get started, we were having uh, school counselors at the middle school level push into classrooms to deliver these lessons. And what we found is that because of other needs of the school and their caseloads, because they're the only school counselor, there was a need for a para, an additional uh, staff member, to support delivering that curriculum in those areas. So that is a, is a very minimal cost for what we'd be getting um, to implement that program. This is the Boulder uh, curriculum, life skills curriculum. Uh, I know that Dr. Ciatola is a huge advocate, has been a huge advocate, really would love to push this down into elementary school. Um, so the, the coaches are paras is what you're saying? Well, this, this, this $10,000 certainly would be, um, uh, believe the other, um, it is actually not a consultant, but we have a, a teacher, but it's only um, 20, I think it's like 20, 23 or 20, 20 yeah. an hour. It's less than 30 hours a week. Um, 
that the teacher, but we have that. Yes. That's currently budgeted in the larger budget. This is the additional ask in order to increase delivering of that to other grade levels. Other grade levels, okay. Mm -hmm. So we're moving out. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Good question. I feel like um, maybe I'm jumping all over. Is it okay to? No, no, no. All right. yeah, I don't want to like make this an unflowing meeting, but. Uh, so the virtual academy, that was um, something mm -hmm. last year that sounded so awesome and promising. I was mm -hmm. real hopeful for that, and then we just couldn't do it. But am I seeing that it's going to happen this year? It, no, it, it's it not. is not. That's it correct. Not. Okay. That's correct. Because it, it was at a price tag of $107,000. Yes, the correct. The thing that I liked about that, though, was that it also would have increased our revenue. We would have had maybe more students, and we would have... That's been correct. Able, yeah, I know. That's the part that I think is that worth putting them back in there if it's going to increase our revenue, but we don't know by how much our revenue would be increased because we don't know how many students would be. Well, and, and that in that particular model, where we would start is is with 25. We would look at 25 seats to be able to begin. And, and I think your point is very valid to what Mrs. Harper said. It's difficult to build programs for kids. It costs to build programs right. for kids. Right. And this is certainly a, a valid point to that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think this was going to bring back some of the homeschooled kids. Is that's what the other we thing I liked hoping. was that it was some of the kids who maybe had suffered issues in the school system, you know, the things that I, behavioral health issues or whatever it was, or, you know, just could not or were unable to be in the school system for whatever reason, and it looked like a really great alternative for them. It's, we haven't figured out the income flow on that. Right, the, the, but the revenue is going to be, because you said It 25. would be about three times that dollar amount, but we wouldn't see that money until 2021. Correct. But it would be an investment this year of 107, but we'd see it the next year. So I don't think that, you know, if we don't do that this year, this will be something we would be talking about again next year. And maybe this year, if we don't do it, this is a good I plan to talk about, well, do we have 25 or do we have 50 kids? We don't, do we really know that? And, and we do. Uh, based upon the, the board's uh, request last year, we did put out a survey. Uh -huh. um, and uh, we have roughly, a, right now, about 250 students that are homeschooled here in, in Queen Anne's County. And I believe it was over, if I, my numbers are correct, it was over 50, close to 75, that requested, we would be interested. We want to learn more about, about what this about opportunity is. Um, uh, there appears an interest. Right. We, 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 don't have to go we think we could fill 25 seats is to, to help answer your question, probably. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, my, and I guess my question would be the $107,000 and 300, uh, $107,370, what, what is that? purchasing us? Is that materials? Is that um, sure. setting up the technology? Sure. That is one is, is somebody that's going to manage it. Okay. So that's uh, a person. Correct. And then I believe it's special education, um, yeah. uh, half, uh, correct. Half Thank you. A, mm -hmm. a position mm -hmm. for a special. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Well, I mean, I, I'm willing to keep entertaining that, but I understand our numbers are already getting pretty high. I just see the other benefit of where we would see the money in a year or two. And I see the benefit of the kids who could graduate using a different format because they can graduate from the virtual academy still, correct, and still walk on stage. So we'd be capturing kids who may otherwise be somewhat aimless and able to pull them in and also have a revenue stream in about two years, a year or two. Excuse me. Well, I wouldn't classify homeschools as being aimless. I no, mean, no, not aimless, rigid. but I just meant that once they're in the virtual academy, here is a program you're following. You're a part of, you have, you have a person you're reaching out to. It's a different delivery model. Yeah, you have, uh, you're part of something. And it's, you can walk the stage, apparently, when you graduate. You can, there are a lot of things that come along with it that are positive accolades that the community recognizes. So I think you're taking a person who may not have had those necessarily, and they're getting all that through being a part of this program. And for $107,000, I don't think that that's that Well, the other bad. thing is that it wasn't just homeschool kids, though, right? It was the kids was that the maybe kids need that, that been... type of delivery model right. to yeah, get that, their high school that, diploma. That, right. that, that's, ex right. that's exactly right, Captain Kelly. Um, so anchor point students could possibly... Mm. Well, could it, it, could be, it could be a student that needs to accelerate. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have necessarily, you, you know, exactly what that particular 
child may need to advance their learning, this could be an opportunity. Uh, we have students right now, probably 60, 65 students, uh, that suffer anxiety, high anxiety. Yeah. Um, and An alternative approach like this might meet their individual needs. Uh, our home and hospital students that, I mean, there's a, there's a whole uh, revisioning that the superintendent has around looking at not only virtual academy but looking at uh, all of our alternative programs and really rebranding, re-envisioning it so that we can meet the needs of, of more students um, that can benefit from just a different experience than a traditional brick and mortar. So where is this on here that it's 100,000? It's, it's up there on line First item column. number 30. Now, these students in the virtual academy, they could play on teams, too, it's, is that correct? No? They can't be a part it's of It's zeroed out on your sheets here. Yeah, it's okay. zeroed out. So because they can't they it go wasn't to dances? Forward, but Right. Well, and okay. and I believe in in some of the models, especially that the the model that that Dr. Kane had implemented, mm. um, those students did not. They weren't able to participate in in uh, athletics or after school. Mm -hmm. um, Much like the homeschool kids, but they could walk the stage. And they, they, I believe that they had their own. Yeah, part of like they the actually had their own society and things like that. They had their own graduation oh, I see. experience. Okay. I would love to see that more. Um, Immer immersion specialist in your teacher specialist. Right, I'm looking it's for. In, I don't know. Um, because where these it was kids a are having to more forward. access to the things yeah, that the other kids who are in the brick and mortar program can can be a part of too. And 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 I think you know a very valid point here is anytime you build a program, it's it's starting small. It is and in, in and small and, increments and, and seeing what the need is. And and I, and and that's what the superintendent's proposing is. We believe we could handle 25 students to get started, and that. Not now, when. I, I know, and I just don't think that's a huge dollar amount. But I know we're getting up there on our tasks, and uh, we all want everything. Add 107, right? Add 107 I, Mr. Farley. Are you with me on that? I, 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 I even mentioned it to the commissioners during the discussion right. yesterday. I was we a can't fan just of it sit there and year. do nothing. Plus, we got to do. We're going to see a return on this in a year right. or two, and it could be even bigger than. Yep. 25. Well, I guess the return 30, is, is... Well, we get uh, revenue per pupil. We, the re we return do, is that we are reaching out to students. We're giving them another opportunity to learn. Oh, well, yeah. That is, that's that, beyond. That's, that's I don't even need to say line. that. That's I, my social worker yeah. hole. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I'm I get, I'd get into the... Benefits go yeah, beyond. Yeah, right. exactly. I mean, money's great. Right. I'm not going to poo-poo money. Right. So you're asked now... What Board is members that? is three point seven million dollars. Yeah, now what about two? <laughs> All right, what else? What, what, what aisle are we going down now? That's almost two point <laughs> six million dollars above maintenance of effort, but well, um, we can certainly oh, justify this. Oh yeah, we well, justify the whole thing. We could. I just like seeing disenfranchised and marginalized kids having these opportunities, so I'm happy with the thing we just did. Um, and the number is growing, and that's disconcerting, but. You know, the concerns well, you're, at, you're at voicing, too, are key things that were on the survey. Too. Well, yeah, it's and plus important. I had the so opportunity, I don't know if I call it opportunity or just the grit, to be out on foot talking to everybody and consistently to uh, topics. Class sizes are getting too big, and um, I don't like the way bullying is being handled. So those were the two things that came out of my campaign. So I serve for citizens, and I have to follow through with what I've been told by constituents. And... I'm also a parent, and I also like when my children have a class size that the teacher can manage appropriately. But the fact that we have touched on school class sizes, mm -hmm. special education, mm -hmm. and offering a new program, which is what we all want, want to embrace. Be able to do. Yeah. I mean, we have hit the topics mm -hmm. that were most important on all of our mm -hmm. and, maintaining and maintaining compensation for employees. Maintaining compensation for employees. I mean, that was the top. Uh, and I agree with you, Ms. Harper. I, I, just listening to you, you this discussion is directly impacting the classroom. Mm -hmm. And that was a, a big thing last year was looking at the layer of who, who are the kids, who, which people are having the direct student contact and which layers in the system is that happening with and how can we help support them since they're direct student contact positions. Most touch points. Which we have, you know, we've consistently done that and so... Mm -hmm. We cut out last year before last. We cut a ton of stuff out of the central office. We did, which held which held us which back on the legislative audit. A lot of stuff. And then yeah. we we caught and these people that, that are in this office are getting mm -hmm. beat up. Trying I know. To do, we'll see that when we walk through their what their jobs oh, are. One person. Oh, I know. There's so enormous. many hats being worn. Yeah. So, 
but we're, I don't, it doesn't look like we're cutting any people out of the central office because no. we just don't have anybody else. But well, we cut. did have that one issue that's not going to be able to be taken care of from the financial legislative audit. What was that? I don't know what it is, but that's going to be probably brought up. Well, this, you know, you didn't take care of this that's yet. That's Mr. Uh, well, we have the audit. School right. audit. You know, the, the internal <coughs> audit. But like I said, I, I think we hopefully we'll see some economies by going out on RFP necessary. You'll see that um, probably next month mm -hmm. um, when we select a new order, well, more like April. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we can see some economies of scale there or because it definitely will be bit that that scope of work will definitely be built into the RFP. And if we can come in with the about equivalent of what we're paying, then it's it's a moot point that we would need additional funds. Okay. But mm -hmm. it definitely addressed the OLA, OLA concern. So can I, I just want to interject here. You know, we only had a, bud, a fund balance left over of 234 from last year. The 234 is what we used. We had about $600,000 left over from last year, which is still, it's still marginal. Tight. It's marginal in an almost $100 million yes. budget. So we're spending wisely. And thank God it wasn't that harsh of a winter that we yeah. didn't have any boilers blow up or, you know. So I think that we're very conscientious about, across the system, everybody's very conscientious about budget and how we're spending the money. So it's not like we're asking for the moon and, and then having a million dollars or two million dollars left over. We're actually utilizing what we're given. And we're spending it for where it's intended. Exactly. Yes, I think we're getting a good value out of each dollar invested. and. Uh, I, I see that. Last year was a bit of a blur, I admit. I'm a first year at the rodeo, but this year, you know, a little more clear, a little more precise, and I think that we're way less wasteful than anybody wants to make us out to be. Totally concur. We've been doing how many years? Yeah, yeah you, you, I mean, you have we historical all, knowledge. We see yeah. from, you know, but I don't want to belabor that point. I just want to say that, you know, I am comfortable with this, seeing that we have addressed the needs of what we okay. have heard from the the community and our own, you know, collective thoughts on. So am I, and, and we're actually covering where we have stipends for life skills coaches. That ten thousand is located in this. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And we're covering the bullying thing, which you also mentioned is one of the yeah, things you heard a lot. Yeah, that's a whole other topic. I'm probably not meant for budget discussions right now. But no, it's because it's on here. But it's under here. Yeah. Life skill coaches is. Oh well, well, yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the thing that I heard was <coughs> everybody talks a good talk about how they handle bullying in the school system. And when I went door to door, they were like, "But my neighbor's kid didn't get anything," and my blah blah blah. Now I do know that when it's your own children, your story is always going to be that <laughs> your kid was. What it, you know, there's some perceptions, um, subjective perceptions. So I get that when I was campaigning, but, but just um, you know how bullying's being handled, and I wasn't prepared to really even talk about all that tonight. No, that, that's okay. But it, we're, the fact that we're addressing it now, and mm -hmm. we want to keep it in the budget. I mean, mm -hmm. we all concur that it's yeah, mm -hmm. it is an issue, and, and ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars to drop in the hat compared to other th other right and the pain items. that the, ch the kids who get bullied end up enduring it for is, a lifetime. It is an issue. So what do we do now? Do we need a, a motion uh, we will, to go We forward? will take this recommendation. There's no vote or anything. I don't believe okay, needed so to. We'll just take this. We'll you will see Dr. this number Kane. again on March the 6th. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. I'm jumping the gun. You, are you? I just want to make sure I had my, everything. Did we, Michelle had text here. Michelle got Yes, her. we addressed all of her okay. issues. And Sharon had a, and had a load of too. questions. Okay. I'm sorry. Mrs. Morissette and yes, Ms. Sorry. Ms. Sorry. I know. No, I no, feel no. like you saw I'm okay the with questions Terry, Ms. Harlow had. You, we did address some of those. Yes, things. and they're. Yes. I believe they're in. Um, yeah. Now, um, I'm looking now. Most of them are in there. Um, I do need to go through them just one more time. But the original that were on that tracker that we developed, right. all of those have been addressed in the package you handed tonight. I know she sent out an email because of her emergency, mm -hmm. and um, I'll go through those as well. Double check, make sure that we've addressed them all. Okay. She had some she wanted to. I'm, I'm going over right, right now. Get I'm reduced. going over right now. Yeah. Check that if you would. To make right. sure you've addressed her. Just make sure that we have. Well, this was. Um, Thank you, sir. Very welcome, sir. Great job. Thank That's you, right. Mr. Farley. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. Because I think some of those we specifically took out <laughs> that she wanted Not to another take. another one. <laughs> well, <laughs> it doesn't have um, um, I think all of them, but. I, I can't pull up her email. Um, I think some of those you're going to have to answer. Okay, yes. I will take care of it. Honestly, I think you're going to have to. But as far as Ms. Moore said, yes, I, I have her. Mm -hmm. We, we, yes, we covered everything that she wanted. Um. Okay. 
You did. You saw her email of the items she wanted to cut out of the budget. Mm -hmm. well, he's going to have to address for Mrs. Harlow's issues. Um, okay, but were they items to cut out of the budget or not? They, they were to be added back in, so he's going to have to address that. I'll take care of it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yes. The Ankle Points Academy nurse. I'm not, you know, hey, let's go blow up our number even more. But I remember that discussion last year of being, could Anchor Points Academy students use the nurse over at the Centerville Elementary School? Is that even an option? You know, what, what became of all that? What, is the need for the nurse? Have there been any situations this year that occurred that have put us at a liability or a danger because we don't have a designated nurse there? Well, and, and I believe that was an original request from, from the superintendent, and that was a 0.5 nurse and a 0.5 uh, secretary that, Mr. Fisher, correct me if I'm wrong, but that was deleted out of the budget mm -hmm. um, okay. as, as a request. So that's just, because I just saw it on the side. Was it a request by us? By no, it was, uh, it was I, I believe, as the superintendent was going through, you'll see it on the right. FY 2020 right. school-based position. It's the last mm -hmm. one this where one. it says alternative, where it's a 0.5 um, through her, her budgeting process with us, uh, mm -hmm. she felt that could be removed mm -hmm. at this time um, in Do order to meet any, some of the needs. Um, incidents this year, this past year? I mean, if she felt that it could be removed, my guess is going to be no, because if we had incidents, then we wouldn't have. Well, I think this is, I think this is another case is we could go through this whole chart again and, okay. and talk about, every you know, one. Yeah. I, the forever. importance of every one of these needs. Um, and I know the superintendent never would have brought any of these to you if she didn't feel that they were needs of the school system, but she also is recognizing that, you know, we have to in order to get to a, a certain yeah, number, we have to make choices, right? it's our 85, 86% of our budget's people. That's the truth, yeah. Well, I want to uh, take about a five minute break okay. before we go back and make a final decision on this. Okay, okay so sure. Something else. Right. Okay, okay with you guys? All right, we'll break for five Welcome back. Okay. I think we do need to make a, a vote on this. Okay. We can't uh, right now. We will vote in open session at the at the um, March sixth, obviously after she present to us. But I want to make sure we have a, a full consensus before we move forward since especially since Dr. King's gonna put a lot of work into getting this ready. Honestly we don't need a vote. Mm -hmm. All we need is just to have a consensus to move okay. to allow the superintendent to move forward. That's okay. all we need here. Thank you, Parliamentarian. <laughs> Thank goodness you know. So do we have a consensus among the three of us to move forward with this presentation and this number? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yes. I think we did a good job. All right. Okay. Thank well, you very much. Right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The next item on the agenda is future meetings. So because we have made this decision um, to move forward, as far as having our work session next Wednesday, we don't really need a, a work session for because we would be continuing the discussion to come to re resolution on this. Mm -hmm. So I recommend we um, delete that. We're in plenty okay. of time to do that before we need well, at least a week ahead of time. That's the, um, Wait a minute. That is our third Wednesday of the month meeting. Correct. It's in the handbook. Correct. And we can we can decide to do change that. Um, Jackie, it's, it's seven days ahead, right? Is uh, it seven? What okay. is the rule on that? Um, um, seven... Whenever you know. Okay, so if we made the decision now, we, we can do that. Okay. To cancel the 11 to 2 mm -hmm. school board work session on February 20th. But we still have the school board orientation going on from 2 to 4, though. So it's not, it's not changing that. Okay. Um, is that upstairs? Just on my left. Uh, I believe it will be in the HR conference room as it was last year. We'll, we'll oh, verify, right. we'll okay. verify okay. with Dr. Kane, but I believe that's what she was thinking. Okay. okay. And the 21st is the legislative luncheon. Um, March 6th is our regular school board meeting. The superintendent will present her budget at that meeting, and we will take a vote to approve the budget. And then March 20th is our regular school board work session. Which is 11 to 2. Which is 11 to 2, correct. Mm -hmm. And um, on a side note, we need to, um, everyone needs to, to start looking over the uh, changes that we had originally started working on with the handbook. Mm -hmm. um, because I'd like to move into that as soon as we get the budget straight so we can get that handbook changed.
change corrected and because of our also we have some meeting schedule changes where we're doing some things at night and right so yeah. part of that would be one of the items on there is to do the time of 11 to 2 so we have more flexibility on what time we use the 20th is 11 to 2 yes Correct. okay for the time being no but we're the 20th we're oh yeah. march 20th, march 20th. Correct. All right. Correct. Yeah. 11 to 2. And March 6th, um, for, be here at 4.30. 4.30, right. Okay. Regular. okay, any other questions on that? Thank you. Okay, I have a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion's carried. Yay. Yes. I Lovely. didn't let Jackie. Thank you all. Very Thank much. you. Oh, thank, you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Gracie. Good night.